Hello and welcome to another episode of Making Disciples. It's really lovely to be spending this time with you. My name is Chris. I am your host. I'm sat here with my cup of coffee that one of you guys have paid for. Massive, massive thank you. I'm uh, sat here, notes right in front of me in my study. And friends, I am surrounded by two things when I sit in my study. Uh, I am surrounded by books and papers. And the other thing I'm surrounded by is 3D printers and clay models, paint brushes, um, books about art and creativity, a drill press. Uh, I've got a bandsaw. My study, so where I where I work, okay, is part vicar's office, part maker space, okay, and it's hard to believe because the way that my webcam. Uh, works is it focuses on the bookshelves you don't see everything else um i actually run a little 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 youtube channel on uh, making stuff and i if you say who is chris rogers i would say do you know what i'm a i'm a, a creative i'm a, I'm a, a, a love, i love making stuff i'm an artist uh when i left school i went to art college and I was all set to do uh, fine art or film and photography, one of those directions. I was all set for that. And then God called me, quite clearly called me to go and study theology. And I am dyslexic, as some of you know, and words are not books, reading, words, not my world. Paintbrushes and paint under your fingers, that, that is my world. And uh, and still today, I yeah. So I went off into theology. I didn't go to didn't go to art college, but uh, still today, I love making stuff. And and just literally a meter away from me here, I've got a box with drawers. It's got many drawers, and each drawer has got a different kind of glue in it. Because when you make stuff, you need different kinds of glue for different kinds of things. So I've got my glue drawers. So when people come and say, Chris, have you got any glue? The question isn't, do I have any glue? The question is, what are you gluing? Because the question is, do I have the kind of glue that you need? The answer is probably yes. So I love making stuff and I can't communicate how messy one side of my room is uh, and how tidy the other one is. It's uh, quite a scene. Now, why do I tell you this? I tell you this because today's episode is gonna be exploring these two worlds creativity and theology now this is a discipleship podcast in discipleship we are walking in the way of jesus so to understand who we are we need to understand who he is and by understanding who he is we can now understand more about who we are and what we're capable of and what we can do our understanding of god firmly shapes how we are shaped you know he's the potter I am the clay. Uh, and therefore, in today's episode, we're going to be exploring who he is and the implication this has on us because we are all creative beings. If I said to you, are you an artist? You're very likely to say, you know, a small number of people would say yes. Many would say, no, I'm, I'm not an artist. In fact, I'm not very creative. And I want to speak into that and I want to, to dismantle uh, what is happening inside of you when you think about creativity. And I want to help rebuild you in, in his likeness because you are formed in his image. So that's what we're going to be exploring today. Essentially, it's an, a, a, an episode on creativity, but it's also an episode on him. And therefore, it's already an episode about us and us as we grow as disciples of uh, the one that we follow, Jesus. So I hope you find this really interesting. There may be some people out there that you know that would benefit from listening to an episode like this on theology and creativity. Hey, give it give it a share. Let them know it's there. Um, that'd be brilliant. Anyway, I'm going to jump straight in. Here we go. An episode on creativity and theology. So here we go. God, friends, is a dust and a dirt 
artist. God is a atom artist, okay? See, the scriptures start with these amazing creative writings called the book of Genesis. And in it, God's work in the world starts uh, with dust and dirt. These elements, the dust and the dirt, the fragments of the universe, these are the elements. And God takes the dust and the dirt and starts to form something out of nothing. It says that God speaks and things are made and God takes this dust and this dirt and he makes Adam and he makes Eve. You see, God's hands were involved. It says in scripture that we are God's handiwork. It isn't just that God speaks things into being. Uh, He is involved. We are his handiwork. Handy? Andy work. That's exactly what we are. See, friends, God is creative. Uh, He's an inventor. He's a artist. The identity of God is that he is a saviour, he is a father, he is a redeemer, he is a sustainer, and he is a creator. So we even talk, don't we, about God, uh, God, the creator God. The cre- and what's really funny, I heard somebody recently preach in a sermon, and they said in this sermon, oh yeah, Jesus is the saviour, saviour. and then, you, then you've got creator God. What? <laughs> like creator God's different to Jesus? No, 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 like Jesus is the creator God. You look at the creator, create, uh, creation story, and you see the Trinity at work. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are all at work in the creation story. And John 1 makes that super clear, that Jesus was there in the beginning. The Spirit is hovering over the waters. You know, the whole of God is involved in the, in the whole of creation. And we talk about God being a creator God. Jesus is the creator God. Uh, he's, the, the Trinity is the creator God. Psalm 19 verse 1. God's glory is on tour in the skies. God crafted an exhibit across the horizon. God's glory is in is on tour in the skies. God crafted an exhibit across the horizon. I love that. The creator God who's exhibiting his, ma- uh, his uh, creativity and his master uh, craftsmanship uh, across the horizon. Isaiah 64 verse 8. Yet you, Lord, Yahweh, you are Father, we are the clay, you are the potter, and we are all the work of your hand. God is a potter. All the language that you find around the creation of the world is that of a God who is a master craftsman. He's an artist, he's a painter, he's a potter, he's a sculptor. This is who... God is. He's a master builder. He's a master craftsman, a master maker, master painter. Uh, He's a master in the art of creativity, a master in the art of creation. So friends, because we believe in a creative God who is creative with dust and dirt, then this has to affect our everyday lives so they can overflow with creativity. So we're going to explore some of the impact of what this might mean for us. But theologically, guys, when I say theologically, I mean, what does the Bible have to say about this? Okay, Theologically, what does the Bible have to say? God is, at his core, a creative. He is a being of imagination. He's a maker. Uh, He's a designer. He's an entrepreneur. He's an inventor. Okay, that's who God is. That's what he's about. Now, did God stop creation when he'd made Adam and Eve and he rested? No, he's like his creation keeps expanding the universe. Uh, he keeps making, keeps creating. Uh, this is not a one-time work and now the artist sits back and does nothing. God is always at work as a, as a master artist. So friends, we talked about this before on the podcast. What we know about ourselves governs what we do. If we 
uh, believe that we are random, if we believe that we are fleeting, if we believe that we're an accident, then we'll behave so. If we think we are worthless, then we will act worthless. I see this all the time in the work that I do in East London. You know, when people devalue themselves, the knock-on effect is that they end up living their lives in, in a way that mirrors what they think. Uh, they don't have value in their work, they don't have value in what they do, uh, and and their life goes downhill. You know, that, you know it's what you see, because uh, they're living by what they think their value is. And if you think you're random, you're fleeting, or you're an accident, then you will live in such a way, but you are not any of those things at all. Friends, when we were created, we were created to have meaning and purpose. Genesis chapter 2 makes it quite clear that we were put in the Garden of Eden to tend, dress and cre create and care for the created order. We were put in the Garden to have purpose, to work with God. The, the Garden of Eden was always going to become a village and a town and then a city. That was always the plan. And God wanted us to be a part of that plan, to work with him in the co-creation of Eden to the village, to the town, to the city. So we're created to have meaning and purpose. The other thing uh, Gen you know, the book of Genesis talks about is that we are created in the image of God. We were made in his likeness. The Latin phrase, you might have heard it before, it's called, uh, it's the, the word uh, "medio dei. And it, the root of it literally translates as the, uh, the image of God. Uh, or made in the uh, shadow of God or the likeness of God. Uh, you could put it like you, you, you and I are a snapshot or a replica of the divine. We, we somehow in substance are an image, a shadow, a likeness, a snapshot of God. That, that's who we are. We created in the image of God. So are we all creative? When I was growing up, I was told that you were either creative or sporty. When it got to high school, uh, you either had to make a choice. You would either go down the sports route or you would go down the art, drama or music route, the creative route. And you had to go down one route or the other. And we were separated out. And what that told people was some of us are creative and some of us aren't. Sometimes a look, you've drawn something, a teacher looks at you in that way, and it dismantles any idea that you are creative. Um, teachers, I often say to my kids, guys, high school is not there to test your creativity. It, it's there to test how much you can memorize. And high school cannot, and, and, and um, A-levels in the same way, cannot test your creative ability they don't know how to do it the framework doesn't work so we end up in this place where people think they're creative or they're not creative and i want to we are all designed in the image of a creator god and it doesn't matter what you do from uh, being a woods woodworker woodsmith uh, blacksmith baker painter potter um bricklayer uh creative with numbers um somebody who's good with maths and accounting it's form of creativity you know taking something that's chaos and bringing in order um all of this is creativity and we've narrowed creativity down to what happens with the paintbrush and we we narrow it down to does it look like the thing that it's meant to be if it doesn't look like the thing it's meant to be then you are not creative what <laughs> that's like creativity is nothing to do with does it look like what it's meant to be at all so i want to talk about two blockers to our thinking that we are creative or not so there's two things that will stop you from thinking that you are creative or not the first is around wrong comparison uh, when we think uh, i couldn't do that or um, they're a master at that i'm i'm not this wrong comparison will always leave you feeling like you are not good enough. So if you go to a museum and you see the paintings on the wall, and you look at them and go, I can't do that, you could walk away going, therefore I am not creative. No, your creativity may look different. You may have a different ability. Uh, so wrong comparison, comparing yourself in the wrong way to the wrong people will leave you feeling like you're not creative, okay? 
The other thing that will stop you from feeling you're creative or not is fear of, uh, of failure. Uh, fear of failure. Fear of failing so that we don't then try it. You know, I, you, many of us go, I, I, I can't do this, therefore I'm just not. And then we don't test the waters, we don't fail or we don't make mistakes and, or, and therefore we don't explore and we don't know. To become a artist, you've just got to get paint on the page. You've just got to get some paint and some water on that page, uh, on that canvas, and you explore what happens when I do this. That's how a, a painter becomes a painter. They explore what happens when I do this. Those of us that are filled full of fear, uh, I can't do this, we end up in a place where we don't explore and we don't try and therefore we, we don't know what we are capable of. Um, some people have a fear of a blank page. Most artists have a fear of a blank page. You know what they do? They take out their paintbrush and they take out some water and some pigment, whatever color, and they just put it on the page. They just flatten that white, get rid of the white because now there's something on the page. Uh, so that's how they get past this fear of something. Uh, I've got a friend at the moment. I'm going to name who they are, but they're writing a book. It's the first book that they're writing, and they they've talked about it so many times, and they've not they've not done it. They've not done it, and they've not done it. And in the last few months, they've started doing it, and they've started doing it because I just said, "Look, you've just got to get something on the page. It doesn't matter what it is. Just chuck something down. Get something on the on that page. Absolute garbage. Churn it out." You can, once you've broken that fear of the blank page, because now there's something on there, you can delete that later, you know, d down the line. That's a great thing about computers. You hit delete, it's gone. And you, or you could go back and rework it. You can rewrite it, but you're just getting something down. They broke the fear of that white page because they put something on it. They just put a color there. I know it's words, it's not paint, but you get the point. So these two things will stop you from thinking you're creative. Wrong comparison and the fear of failure and they will destroy any sense of creativity in the, inside of you because it'll the, they stop you from stepping forward into that making thing and so where are we up to we've talked about god the creative we've talked about what we know governs what we do and we've talked about how we we are all creative we're creating the image of god the creative is in there but we have wrong comparison and we have fear of failure. So friends, God, the greatest of all creators, the one who fashioned the sun, the humpback whale, uh, the great uh, Dane, um, made us in his image. Uh, when an accountant takes a pile of raw data and fashions that data into a sales report, he's reflecting the image of God, okay? Let's make this really clear. When a woman works the raw soil and causes it to bring forth flowers and vegetables and herbs, she is reflecting the creation of God. When an electrician uh, takes this dangerous, wild electrical current and turns it into something that's usable with light bulbs, he's reflecting the image of God. When a writer assembles letters into sentences and sentences into paragraphs and paragraphs into books, they are reflecting the image of God. Creativity is about taking the chaos and molding something humming with life, something new. That's what creativity is. It, I don't care if you're a knitter or, or you're an electrician or you're an architect or you're a school teacher. You know, school teachers are taking the raw material of a child and they're creating something. Teachers are people artists, okay? Once we can shift our mentality into this place that we are creative, we are molding things, we are shaping things, we are creative, we'll, we'll be able to see ourselves as creative. Therefore, okay, two therefores. Therefore, if the creator God, by his spirit that hovered over the waters in creation is with us, it's the same spirit that's hovering over creation is now within us, get that, okay? Friends, if we understood that, then we will be greater Christians, We'll be holier souls. But beyond that, we'll be greater poets, greater artists, greater songwriters, greater lovers of God and lovers of the universe. If we could only understand that the creative spirit of God is humming inside of us, that we have the very creative fire force of the universe inside of our souls, 
that would make us greater poets, greater artists, greater songwriters and greater lovers. See, I'm, I'm excited. Theology of creativity excites me. What that means inside of us, it should excite us. So friends, if we are filled with creative resurrection spirit, we should be pioneers of creativity in all forms of life. Teaching, writing, mathematics, science, as well as paint, soil and colour. Creativity should be influencing our teaching, our writing, our mathematics and our science as much as it influences our 3D printers, our pencils, our paints, our soil and our colour. Because the creative Spirit of God is humming inside of us. We should see our whole lives humming with creativity because we see the source of that creativity is now in our souls. Therefore, the Spirit of God inside of us, therefore we should the, see the impact of it. Secondly, creative prophets. Creatives have a unique role in the universe as prophets. In art, if you if you do see yourself as an artist or a creative, I want to invite you to see yourself as a prophet. In art, we are once again able to do all the things that we had forgotten. We're able to walk on water. We're able to speak to angels who call to us. Um, we are unfettered amongst the stars. We can do whatever with our creativity. See, the role of a prophet is to be this guerrilla artist, a guerrilla poet, a guerrilla street performer, uh, using words and stars and pencils and paint to God uh, to call God's people to a new, better place. I don't know if you've kind of clocked this, but if you were to look at the prophets of the Old Testament, you would see the prophets humming with creativity. Ezekiel was a weird guerrilla theatre. He laid on his side for long periods of time in protest. Jesus, creativity becomes flesh itself and then rides into Jerusalem. The story of Jesus riding into Jerusalem on the back of a donkey, it is a protest march against the rulers of the city. He is the new king coming into the city. It's a protest march. Jesus was a protester and used this carnival as part of his protest. Isaiah paints word pictures, prophetic dreams of who God is. The prophets were uh, artists. They were creatives. They came up with new ways of protesting and new ways of teaching and new ways of influencing. They were creatives. Friends, if you are an artist, a painter, you're dramatic, a musician, uh, whatever it is you do, you're a knitter, crocheter, bricklayer, whatever it is, bricklayer, use that as a prophet to speak to the world about who God is and what he's calling us into. So friends, we are artists because God is an artist. And we're made in his image. Let's not compare ourselves with others. Let's not fear failure. But let's step into this place where we recognize the spirit of the creator God is humming inside of us. And that whatever you are doing today, you are doing it as a being that is taking the chaos and molding something with humming with life. Be it the life of a child, be it a coffee bean in a coffee shop, um, be it somebody in an office, you are taking the chaos and you're molding something humming with life. That is creativity. Now, I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. I would love to hear a what this theology means to you you can do that by putting something on facebook and tagging me in it chris rogers you can put it on instagram twitter whichever you want to do uh you, if you're listening to this on one of the platforms that has ability to chat stick it in the chat i'd love to hear what this theology means to you how does it liberate you how does it change you how does it form you i'd love to know that secondly i'd love to know what you do 
I would love to know what you, what is your creative thing? Do you brew beer? Do you make wine? Do you paint pictures, write poems? Do you take stamps and turn them into pieces of art? Like, What is it that you do? I would love to hear. I would absolutely love to hear. A friend of mine a few years ago said to me, Chris, I'm not an artist. I'm just not creative at all. Went around to visit them and they had this beautiful display of pieces of art on their wall. They went, I'm not an artist, but I can appreciate other people's beauty in their art. Friends, they had, had them mounted incredibly. I mean, the mounts are amazing. They'd had them mounted on the wall in such a creative way. I'm like, seriously, you may not have made those paintings, but out of those paintings, you've made a piece of art in itself. So please don't tell me you're not creative. We need to expand our understanding of what creativity is. So friends, I'd love to hear from you. Until next time, grace and peace, and we will catch up again soon.